Hello everyone, welcome back again to Plaxus uh, 3D Shallow Foundation course from uh, Theory to Practice. This is going to be lesson uh, 60 and in this tutorial we are going to do uh, seismic analysis of a uh, raft foundation using real earthquake data in Plaxus uh, 3D. So as you can see in uh, this uh, figure we will uh, try to simulate a mud foundation under uh, the effect of uh, earthquake. So we will apply the real earthquake record data at uh, the base of uh, the model and we will see what is uh, the response or behavior of uh, this mud foundation under the effect of uh, this earthquake. So in uh, this tutorial uh, we will uh, shortly talk about some uh, important points for uh, seismic analysis in Plaxus uh, 3D. So first of all, uh, we will talk about uh, which model is more uh, suitable and accurate in uh, Plaxus uh, 3D for uh, earthquake analysis. As we know, we have many uh, soil constructive models like uh, linear elastic, more column hardening soil and uh, uh, many other uh, uh, soil constructive models. So we will uh, talk about which one is more accurate in uh, for seismic analysis in Plaxus uh, 3D and why. We will also uh, talk about uh, uh, earthquake boundary conditions, so what kind of boundary conditions Plaxus uh, required uh, for applying uh, earthquake analysis. Also, we will uh, talk about how can we uh, uh, import a seismic uh, record in Plaxus uh, 3D. We will also shortly talk about dumping uh, ratios for uh, soil and uh, reinforced concrete uh, structures. We will also uh, shortly explain what is a drift correction and why we should apply drift correction in Plaxus uh, 3D and also the importance of uh, time uh, stepping in uh, Plaxus uh, 3D. So uh, we will uh, use uh, this uh, earthquake data which is uh, belongs to California earthquake data in 1990. As we know we have uh, time and acceleration uh, so we will use uh, this earthquake data in this uh, tutorial. So uh, the first uh, thing we will talk about uh, what type or what constructive models is more uh, suitable for earthquake analysis in Plaxus uh, 3D. So actually we can use uh, uh, any other constructive models like a mohor column or hardening soil model uh, for earthquake analysis but uh, the most important and the most suitable and accurate constructive models is the hardening soil model with a uh, small strain stiffness and which is a more uh, suitable and most uh, more suitable and most accurate for uh, uh, earthquake analysis because it captures a nonlinear uh, stiffness of uh, soils at a very small uh, strength, which is very important for dynamic uh, loads like uh, earthquakes or uh, any other uh, uh, dynamic analysis. Uh, other so, I have already uh, defined. Uh, uh, soil geometry and uh, stratigraphy so I will because we have done many uh, tutorials like this I will not uh, I will not repeat the modeling like uh, a foundation because I have already defined a foundation and basement walls so I will show you what is uh, the uh, boundary conditions of uh, this model and what I what is the properties of this wheel which uh, I used in this example. If I click on file and project properties so this is a lesson uh, 60 and we have used uh, this uh, soil contours so we uh, used uh, uh, X uh, 
x as uh, 160 meters so minus 80 uh, in x minimum direction and positive 80 in uh, max x max direction uh, we use a high uh, soil contour in x direction because we will apply the earthquake in uh, x direction that's why we have to use uh, uh, enough boundary condition uh, for earthquake analysis. Also for uh, y coordinates we have uh, 60 meters and minus, uh, minus uh, 30 meters at each uh, side. So regarding the swill properties as I said uh, in here uh, as I said uh, the most important or most accurate uh, soil constitutive models for earthquake is a hardening soil model with this small uh, strain stiffness but actually in this example I will use a mohair column and in uh, maybe in another examples I will try to use uh, this uh, soil constructive models for uh, earthquake analysis so uh, the soil we used in uh, this example okay I think uh, right now it is uh, it's okay and it is uh, ready for calculation so we save the project again and we can uh, start uh, calculation uh, as we know that dynamic analysis takes a very long time uh, to finish all uh, construction phases especially earthquake uh, construction earthquake phase uh, that's why I will uh, pause a video and uh, come back when it is uh, completed okay after a long time the calculation is uh, finished uh, so right now we can see uh, the results so I will uh, tell you what uh, results we need to check while uh, doing the seismic analysis in uh, plexus uh, 3d so the first uh, things we can uh, check the displacement total displacement and also uh, displacement time history so we can uh, check how the displacement is dependent uh, in uh, time during uh, the earthquake so uh, i click on uh, view calculation uh, results I click on mesh material so we can see uh, the displacement is 0 0.01 uh, times 10 to the power minus uh, 3 meter but uh, this displacement is at uh, uh, 20 uh, seconds so the last of earthquake if you want to see the displacement uh, versus time displacement are the math foundation so we can uh, we can click on here create or curve manager so I will delete this one and a new one so in uh, X direction we will uh, select a dynamic time and in Y direction we will uh, select the point at uh, the center of uh, the mud foundation and we will select the displacement in X direction click OK so we can see how the displacement at the center of the mud foundation changes with the dynamic time of earthquake we can see the maximum uh, displacement is about uh, uh, 0 0.03 which is about uh, 3 uh, centimeters if you want to check the displacement at the other points for example I right click on the figure and click add so for example uh, this point at uh, on the top of the uh, basement wall so we can see it is almost uh, the same and uh, if I close it on save and also the vertical displacement uh, uh, due to the building is also about uh, uh, 3. Uh, 60 centimeters 
the other uh, results we have to check after the earthquake is the maximum acceleration or uh, peak acceleration of uh, this mud foundation so we, again we click on uh, curve manager and uh, new so in here we have uh, uh, we uh, in the echo direction we select the dynamic time and we will uh, select it the center of the mud foundation and if we uh, select it acceleration in x direction we can see that the maximum acceleration at uh, the mud foundation is about uh, 0 0.43 uh, also uh, we can uh, check the response spectral uh, acceleration so again if i close this and save again we click on the care manager and new and we have here a uh, spectral uh, response analysis and if i click uh, acceleration at uh, x direction and if i choose uh, the dumping ratio as a 5 and maximum period as a 10 uh, second click okay so we can see uh, the maximum uh, response spectral uh, acceleration is about uh, uh, about 0. Point, uh, two, 0. 0.2 uh, 40. Uh, so uh, this is important we can uh, compare uh, this uh, response spectral uh, time with the uh, response spectral uh, time uh, or design response design response spectral uh, from uh, the practice codes and uh, this uh, response uh, spectral should be uh, aligned with the uh, design response spectral analysis uh, curve or uh, below uh, that uh, also we can check uh, what is uh, the frequency of uh, the building or of this mud foundation again we uh, can click on the curve and create a new one and uh, this one can be done in a Fourier so we uh, select uh, the point at the center of the mud foundation and we click again on uh, acceleration at uh, the echo direction and we will select spectrum as a power spectrum and we uh, click OK so we can see that uh, the dominant uh, frequency of uh, this mud foundation is uh, about uh, uh, 2.54 7 also we can uh, do this for uh, the soil also if we uh, click on here click on new again and if we select it, uh, some point at the uh, ground surface and acceleration in here earthquake uh, as we can see it is almost uh, the same uh, okay the other important uh, things is uh, stress results so when we have uh, undrained uh, material we can check uh, the pour water pressure and which uh, we don't have in this example also we can check the forces in structural element for example if I close this one and this one okay if I select the earthquake and if i double click for example on this uh, foundation we can see that if i select it, uh, click on force for example moment at one one direction we can see we have maximum positive and negative moment in here but actually this moment is uh, change uh, in a uh, change uh, uh, change with uh, earthquake time so if I click on here show between uh, faces we can see that we can uh, select that uh, earthquake at any time for example 
uh, when it is zero or when for example at uh, for example at 8.8 .8 second we can see that uh, this uh, value is uh, changed actually to uh, get uh, such a curve between uh, the maximum uh, moment or maximum force in any structural member versus time in plexus we need to write a python uh, code for uh, this and it will not uh, be included in uh, this course Okay, uh, this was uh, for uh, this example and I hope it was clear and uh, useful. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.